Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church in this day of worship and celebration of God's love for us as his people. What a mouthful there to consider the greatness of God's grace and claim upon us as his very children. We're so happy you're here. Those of you who are in our worship setting here this morning in our sanctuary and those of you in your sacred space joining us virtually and online, we're happy you're a part of our worship community too. We ask you to post your prayer concerns or any joys or announcements you'd like to share with the community. Randall will make us aware of those as we prepare to share in the prayers of the people this morning. So let's take a few moments to lift up some prayer concerns and joys as we, uh, or excuse me, our announcements first and then we'll share in our prayer concerns and joys before we begin our time of worship. Now we have a plethora. Y'all didn't know I knew that fancy word. I learned that word at Faulkner High School. Plethora of announcements here today. So I'm not going to read them all, but I will make a note for them and y'all pick them up later. I may go in some deep. Bell Choir is practicing today. Is that correct? Blake said we're still on. It's a big day in our community, right? We have the, what is it called? Open house? Holiday open house. That's right. So Go and support Ripley today if you can. I think that starts pretty soon, doesn't it? Goes till 3 p.m., is that correct? Just go. Goes to 5 p.m., great. So holiday open house in Ripley. So if you can be a part of that, uh, this festive occasion, please do so. I know our Elizabeth Bain's probably out and running around. Blake, others have already begun their preparations for today. So grateful to be part of our community. Bell Choir, five, excuse me, 4 p.m., choir practice, 5 p.m. That's our lessons and carols. Invite friends. We have people throughout our community uh, from different denominational backgrounds. We've got Baptist, Church of Christ, Pentecostal, Presbyterians, Methodists. We've got them all. So y'all come and be a part and help spread the word of our community choir. The Journey Bible Study continues. That's our 6 p.m. Wednesday evening virtual Bible study with four panelists. We invite you to tune in or watch it at your time when it's convenient on our Ripley Presbyterian Facebook page. Page. Um, we do have coats for kids. That will be uh, this Tuesday at 3 p.m. It will go until 5 p.m. And then in addition, we'll have coats for kids distribution on Thursday. Our partnership with the Ripley Rotary. We have many Rotarians. Here in this setting, what an honor it is to serve the young people in our community as being the hands and feet of Christ by providing them warmth, not only physically but spiritually, during this holy season. Thank you all for your leadership, Rotarians, and partnership, RPC folk. Come and help and be a part. We need volunteers and would love for you to share in that if you can. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion in worship next Sunday. and. Uh, Everybody can go ahead and relax. I'm gonna serve, we're going to serve you where you are. I know I had it some muddled last time. We had people coming forward and some went out there and this way and we took wrong turns. So we're going to make it real simple and serve you in the pews next Sunday for worship's Holy Communion. Advent preparation team will meet immediately following worship next Sunday and they'll begin uh, meeting and all the festivities that are part of. We got some soup and Santa stuff coming on. Anslo, you better get ready. Santa Claus is going to be in the house one day before Christmas here. 17th, is that right? Okay. We have a congregational meeting that is set for November 19th. That's for the purpose of electing your new elders to our church session. For those of you unfamiliar with our government structure, your elders are your governing board, more or less, uh, of your congregation and uh, we have three new nominees who have been uh, will be uh, listed as a slate of elders they are Ann Wigington, Price Elliott and Vince Jordan and we will have that election on the 19th there also it will be a time to offer nominees from the floor at that occasion as well I said I wasn't going to say all these announcements but I just about did didn't I now last one this is very important we have a new membership workshop set for next Sunday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. But if you want to attend, please let me know, because right now, Terry Grisham and I are the only ones signed up, and we're just not going to do it by ourselves. So if any others want to join us, 
please uh, let us know if you've been a recent member of the church or you're considering membership of the church, just want to learn more about the ministry and membership of RPC. If you'd like to be part, text Lynn or myself uh, this week. Everyone should have my mobile number. If not, ask me after worship. I'll give it to you. But certainly we have the church number published here. We'd love to have you for that part. But yes, no, just uh, seriously, if we know this is a busy time. So if it's not convenient for others to join us, we'll punt and have our workshop a little later in the year, okay? Or in the early next year. We'll continue to have these every few months or so, okay? All righty. Did we get it all? I hope so, don't y'all? Let's take a look at our prayer consist, uh, prayer list, our mission focus as we prayerfully consider for this month is Tippa County Good Samaritan, one of our all-time favorites. We're grateful to be partnering with our friends at the Good Samaritan Center to provide extra nourishment to the people of our community. Last month's mission, mission focus, we exceeded $1,600. 1600 six, no, I'm about to say that again, $1,665 will be going to the Presbyterian Hunger Grant, and guess what? We'll receive some of that back, too. We traditionally get about a $1,000 grant from the various Presbyterian churches that, once again, go to the Good Samaritan Center. So other ways we're serving this community together. So if you'd like a portion of your gift today to go to our mission emphasis, simply put it on your memo. I want this amount to go to the mission focus this month or write a separate check 100 percent of whatever we collect for our mission focus goes out of these doors out of these walls into the community to be the hands and feet of christ wow isn't that exciting so thank you for contributing thank you for your gifts and tithe oh my goodness you are such a gracious giving church isn't it amazing how this truly is how these things work out through God. We have several improvements we need to make on our church campus. Our roof, I won't go into great detail, but y'all can see we have some uh, significant repairs that need to be made to our roof, other needs, improving Wi-Fi. So, um, and as we have these needs, our giving has increased immensely here. You new people, you long-term people, you folks who call yourself RPC are a gracious lot. Thank you for your gifts that allow us to sustain our ministry and serve this community. You're a blessing. We're, we're, we're honored to be partners in ministry. All right, now let's get to the prayer list. Can we do that? We have our pantry. I'm still not through. We've got our pantry. Y'all don't forget those items too. That's our partnership with the um, work that Jenna and many other social workers in our community. How's it going, Jenna? If you got it stocked up good? Any big needs right now? Let's just say it. Anything you got? Okay, great. I know there have been y'all been procuring some items out of there too, haven't you? Golly. This is a place where these social workers of our community can go at a minute's notice, and that's how much notice they often get to provide care to children, grab what they need, without having to buy it themselves, to know we're with them in their service to these young kids. Awesome. Thank you. That was the brain work of Jenna and Lynn. Thank you all for putting that together. And thank you all for giving and sharing in our pantry here at RPC. All right. Let's lift up now our prayer concerns and joys. We uh, do want to... Add to our prayer list. This is a joy and a concern. We want to add little Slate Smith to our prayer list. He uh, went to Laboner Friday. Is that correct, Susan Kyle? And uh, RSD uh, is getting better. Came home yesterday. So we give thanks there. But he's still not uh, 100%. He's still a sick little fella. As we all know how these uh, beautiful children and infants can get so sick so quick. So y'all be prayerful for uh the, the whole family there, Brad and Molly and Slate, and certainly proud to get grandparents. We will lift up Slate in prayer during uh, prayers of the people today. We want to pray for Freddie Daniel. He's the brother of our beloved Shirley McLean. Uh, uh, Freddie's going to be having a heart procedure. Is that tomorrow, you said, Shirley? I think so, in Nashville, yes. So uh, we want to be prayerful for Freddie. Love he and uh, his family, all the the beautiful Daniels from downtown Hopewell, Mississippi. Suburbs, oh, he may be more closer to Salisbury, is he? 
Shirley, I think so. So we're going to be prayerful for Freddie, and uh, it's a uh, heart valve that he's going to be uh, receiving tomorrow. Okay, let's uh, continue to remember, and we'll touch on this in children's time too, the conflict in Israel and Palestine. We lift up all those in harm's way in that horrific time of war there. Um, we uh, continue to pray for our beloved Kathy. Glad you're here and all celebrating your good news and restoration. Are there other updates, additions to our prayer list? Jason Hall. Jason Hall. Yes. Now, someone gave me a prayer, and I'm sorry, someone gave me one right as I was walking in. Yes, yes, thank you. You did tell me. And uh, Bill Rayner passed away after a long illness. And he's the brother of our beloved Ernest. Uh, dear friend of our church and uh, coach for kids and Norris and Lynn, longtime partner. And he's, an, he's a, I think he's an affiliate member of RPC. Let's make him one. Can we take action on that right now? No, I'm kidding. But we're, Ernest is a, a gift to our church and, and certainly our community. We will be, be prayerful for Bill and all of his loved ones. Are there others this morning? Gracious life. We'll be praying for Miss Jean. Thank you, Randall. Are there others? All right. We're going to take my son Noah off. He is doing better, and uh, we celebrate that. Thank you. Manya, are there others? Hey, we're going to pray for each and every one of these. We're going to pray for you during our prayers of the people, and we're going to pray together that God's grace will sustain us through every sorrow, every challenge, and help us to know the fullness of joy and life in God. Let us now worship our Lord. First lesson of scripture is our call to worship from 1 Thessalonians. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we may not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father his children. 
urging and encouraging you and pleading that you may lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Friends, join me in responding to that call to worship our God by standing with me and beginning our worship with a hymn of praise, number 244. Let's be seated. As a part of our worship, we come into this holy place offering our praise, but we also come to this holy place remorseful of our brokenness and our need for restoration. So join with me now as we pray together our prayer of confession. Almighty and merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is nothing good in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare those, O oh God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared unto men in Christ Jesus our Lord. Grant that we may hereafter live a godly righteous and sober life to the glory of his name. Amen. What a great gift it is for me to offer you these pastoral words as an imperfect and sinful people that we all are. Hear this declaration of God's forgiveness. While we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. This proves God's love for us in that while we were sinners, still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we've been saved through his grace, will we be crowned in his glory forever. Friends, believe this good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Would you stand with me and let's celebrate our forgiveness and proclaim our forgiving God's glory in song. This morning's first reading comes from the Old Testament book of Joshua. If you'd like to follow along, you can find this in your pew Bible on page 195. I'll be reading from Joshua chapter 3, starting with verse 7 and then continuing through the end of the chapter. The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you will know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to, to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout this time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the water flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that, ri the city that is beside Zarethan, while those flowing towards the Sea of Araba, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Young disciples, y'all better come on up or down. Books, man alive. Good to see y'all. Hey, Baylor Walker. Hello, man. What? Somebody better take a picture of this group here. They're looking so good. What's up, Enslow? How are you, buddy? Good to see y'all. Happy you guys are here. Okay, I'm glad to see y'all today. Did y'all know, can y'all hear me okay? Yes, she's coming in. Did y'all know that uh, the Ripley High School golf team won the state championship? They just barely won it this week by 18 strokes. That's a whole lot. That's not a little bit, is it? And you know what? When they won that state championship, I suspect every one of them, they may have got, did they get a medal? Did they get something? They got something, didn't they? Every individual player, got, and you know what, when they're old like me, y'all think I'm old? I shouldn't no. ask. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. We practiced that before church. But when they get older like me, they're going to probably still have those medals. Y'all think so? And they'll probably give it to I think so. And, and what does that medal help them to do? Well, they'll probably give it to their family one day, won't they? 
Why do you think they'll do that? Our work here is done. Y'all are so smart. It'll be an heirloom. Now, I would have never thought of that word. I was just going to say a keepsake. It is your cousin's birthday. We are all over the place now. The top is off of it, y'all. We are going, but here's the deal. It'll be a heirloom. It'll be a remembrance for their family forever of that special day, right? Well, y'all may have heard Miss Jennifer just read a few minutes ago. And she spoke of the people of Israel crossing the Jordan River and what Joshua said to them, when y'all get ready to cross, I want 12 people from his, the people of Israel go out and stand in the middle of that Jordan. And we didn't find out why, did we, Jen? That she didn't finish the rest of it. That reading will pick up. But here's, I know the rest of the story. After they stood in that Jordan, Joshua said, every one of y'all pick up a stone, get a rock, and I want that to be a remembrance in times to come when your family asks you, what are these rocks for? What do these rocks mean? Well, this is when God journeyed with us through the wilderness, across the Jordan, into the promised land. I want you to remember this story of this victory that's even far greater than a state championship in golf. I want you to remember this victory forever. Okay? So today, what I'm going to do Let's see here. Alina, would you hand me those rocks over there? There's two different bags, sweetheart. I want to give y'all a rock. And these rocks are special rocks. These rocks, these rocks here are from Kersey. And these rocks are from Bethsaida. Yes. You can do whatever you want to. Most especially what I want y'all to do is when you take this rock, I want it to be a reminder for you to pray. And what we're going to be praying for as young disciples and older disciples, are the children who are in that war-torn region right now, in Palestine, in Israel, in the Gaza Strip, so remember those precious babies who are like, well, y'all get your own rock. I don't need to be telling y'all which one. Y'all might see one you like it. There's a Bethsaida pack. You don't, Brooke said he's going to pass. He's good. Don't want a rock. I know there are a lot of children that don't have families. You want another, You want one now? He don't want one. What about a basketball? Will you take a basketball? You want? Okay. <laughs> Here you go, Baylor. You want one? Oh, you got one. Walker, you want a rock? Okay. Now, what are we going to do with these rocks? What's this going to help us? Pray on it. Pray on it. Yes. You can paint it. Yes. And it's going to remind us to pray for our friends, even though we don't even know them, and our brothers and sisters who are impacted, children like us, in that, in that war, okay? So we'll pray for their health and safety. Let's pray now together, okay? God, we thank you that as the people of Israel journeyed through the promised land, and they were encouraged to take these stones up to remember, of your, remember your deliverance. May we remember your grace and love for us as we pray for our brothers and sisters in harm's way, especially the innocent children who are so susceptible to the conflicts of those older and there's so much that they don't understand. We ask that in every way pleasing to you, God, to bring peace, wholeness, and restoration and that your name will be glorified. We pray for the safety of every child there. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all. Everybody get one at one and one. Okay, y'all want some candy? Uh, yeah. You would like some, Anslo? Mm -hmm. And your mama's watching on TV, Anslo. She wrote a while ago. We're going to say hi to her. My goodness, Miss Lynn has brought out the good stuff here. This is, uh, this is it's maybe Halloween leftovers. What do y'all think? We still yeah. got the good stuff right now. Hair bows and uh, Reese's. Can I have that Reese's, Mom? We've got a peanut allergy in my house. I have to sneak around and eat my Reese's when nobody's watching. I do have one other announcement I failed to notice. Look at these beautiful flowers today. Ann Wigington, did you see those flowers? Oh, my lands. These, uh, Randolph, give them a look there. Those flowers are given. In honor of Miss Ann Wigington's birthday by her children, her grandchildren, 
and her great grandson. So we celebrate with them your life and love and those beautiful flowers today. What a gift this choir is to me and to our worship. Thank y'all so much for sharing your gifts with us. This beautiful, sacred hymn this morning. Our third lesson of scripture today is from the Gospel of Matthew. As has been the case, we are continuing our journey through Matthew's Gospel for just a few more weeks. You'll remember several weeks ago, we began uh, the, the ministry of Jesus in the temple setting as he journeyed into Jerusalem, and now he's been having these great theological debates and discussions, some might would say among the church folk arguments with the people of faith, the leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, and uh, the chief teachers. But then today, we need to listen closely. He's just continued these exchanges, and now we're going to transition a bit where he starts talking to his disciples and to those who are in his maybe closer, more inner circle of friendship of the faith, okay? So that's where we're going to pick up today. As we prepare to hear the word, as we always do, let us ask God to help us to even do that. Would you pray with me? Oh God, you are the word made flesh. Will you open our ears? Help us, God, to hear. 
your scripture also tells us, God, you are the light of the world. So we ask you to open our eyes. Help us, God, to see more clearly. And your grace, oh God, as we've just sang about, is the wellspring of life. Will you open our hearts? Help us to feel and know the living waters of your grace. That molded more in your image, even in this time of worship, we may go forth with our hope and joy renewed and that we may be light and love to a world in need. In your name and for your glory. In Christ our Lord we ask this. Amen. So from Matthew's Gospel in chapter 23, I'll begin with verse 1. We'll share the first 12 verses. Then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them a rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, and all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. I mentioned earlier that we'll be sharing in a new member workshop, a seeker's workshop next Sunday for those who can attend. And we have journeyed most recently through a time of confirmation and new membership for our younger uh, folks in the church. We're finishing. Some of them will be joining our church the first Sunday of Advent this year, kind of giving y'all a broadcast of what's to come. And then the second Sunday of Advent here at RPC, it's a very special service we call the Hanging of the Greens. It's so special, there's no preaching that day. Isn't that wonderful? One of y'all's favorite days, I know. Um, and on that day, we're also going to celebrate Holy Baptism. We're going to have a lovely uh, baptism service uh, little Hal is going to receive that great gift of the faith, and we are so excited to, to celebrate an Advent coming. As I think back of these times of confirmation and journeying and education for all of us, and especially our young people, I'm grateful that uh, in our text that we heard read in Thessalonians for our call to worship today. If you'll remember, last week we heard in the Thessalonians text where Paul spoke of God nurturing us as an infant, as a mother cares for her child. He used that imagery to speak of God's love for us, claim upon our lives. And that's why we celebrate even the great gift of infant baptism. Even before we have any concept of God, he already knows us by name. His claim and his life-giving love, his work of salvation is done. Certainly we get our opportunity as we grow in the faith to claim this faith as our own. But the work of our salvation has been completed forever through the life-giving love of our Lord. So isn't it appropriate that even infants, before they can even conceive of God, know that God's work for them is complete. It all begins with his grace. And as we think about those journeys through education, and as we heard education in the faith in our reading today, as Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica, he said, now I spoke to you before about the father above's love for us as infants, as a mother cares for a child, and here I want you to know also 
that God's love for you is like a father cares for his children. You see, in that culture, we spoke of this in our Bible study this week, in that first century world, that culture, the nurses, the mothers would care for the infants in their youth, those families who were of means, it would be a nurse, a, a hired uh, servant, shall we say, to provide the primary care for the children. But as they grew, Rosemary, it would be the father who would take on the educational, the nurturing, the guidance of workmanship, and certainly in their faith. You know, in that culture, some of you may be aware of this, it was never appropriate to do anything other than what your family had ever done. So if you were table makers, if they were table makers before you, you became a table maker. In that shame, honor culture of society, you didn't want to go above your family. You certainly didn't want to bring shame to your family, but you wanted to continue the legacy that was taught before you. And here Paul says in Thessalonians that God, our Father above, and Jesus, our brother who came to earth, nurtures us like an earthly father to show us, to care for us, to give us the tools for the most joy-filled life that we can live. So friends, we give thanks for those readings today and as we transition to Jesus teaching in the temple now to friends and disciples and the crowds, that's where our text picks up today, right? I remember, as I was saying, going through these confirmation classes over the year, I had little Cole Adams in one several years ago. You remember this story, Lynn? Cole and several of his rowdy, rambunctious buddies were in that confirmation class, and we'd meet here on Wednesdays, and we'd go to Sonic and, and get chili cheese puffs or maybe go to McDonald's and get ice cream. I was in it for the eating. They were in it for the confirmation class. And Cole asked me one day a real profound theological question. He said, he kind of tilted that head like a puppy does when they're trying to figure out what you're saying. He said, Brother Jody, do you practice what you preach? And I thought, boy, that Cole, that is a profound theological question. It's a, and he's really kind of getting up in my business too, isn't he there? So I said, well, Cole, you know, I try to. I mean, I study the Bible, I pray hard, and sometimes I blow it. I mean, I'd really try to apply the faith, not only in what I say, what did I preach, but how am I living it out? How am I being the hands and feet of Jesus? And then he tilted that head even more like a puppy. He said, no, Brother Jody, I'm talking about do you get in front of the mirror and do you practice like you're going to preach on Sunday morning? I said, I got you, brother. <laughs> He asked a deep question, didn't he? Because that's what Jesus says to us in our text today. Don't be like those who don't practice what they preach. More important than simply saying what we're about as people of faith, are we living it out as people of faith? He said, don't be like those who teach only, who say things only, and don't live for the concern of their brothers and sisters around them. As we talked about last week, right? We spoke of it beginning with our relationship with God, our Christian faith, right? It begins, and our beautiful Jewish brothers and sisters have taught us this so well. It all begins with bringing glory to the Father. It's that relationship, that vertical relationship. And then we transition to that horizontal relationship of loving our neighbor. It's a both and, right? It's not an either or. As Jesus said, that greatest commandment last week, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's the beginning of our faith. But then the second is like it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. So he continues this teaching today. And here's the deal. Jesus is going to get in our business a little bit today, too, like Cole Adams did in mine. Because you see, it's easy for us, me, to read these words and say, well, Jesus is telling them how they need to be doing it, right? And then I figure out the them is me as I read a little deeper. He's not just talking to his disciples of then, friends, today, or that crowd there. He's talking to us 
as modern day representatives of the faith. So let's embrace this text and let's see what could Jesus be challenging and encouraging us with in this text with the words of life. He speaks of in our text these beautiful words uh, where he says, the greatest among you will be your servant. We hear that throughout scripture as Christian people, right? Jesus himself where he said, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many as the gospel of Mark tells us. Here today, he says those who are the greatest in our faith are the greatest servants. If you want to be bigger than yourself, well, you've lost it all. The more you exalt yourself, you're really going to end up being humbled. And the more you humble yourself, the more you'll be exalted. So he said don't do it for show, right? Don't put on airs and pray big fancy prayers just to impress folk. Don't do things in your faith just to shine the light on you. If your motive is for your own glory, you've lost the essence of why we practice our faith. I don't know if y'all have written down Highway 15 lately. I'm not going to call this person by name. I'm going to go ahead and take them off the hook. There's a beautiful sign out on the highway that says Ripley Presbyterian Church. And that sign, I've not even noticed it. It had gotten mildewed, it would gotten dirty, you couldn't even hardly read it. And you know how you just get in a routine of seeing things and you don't pay attention? Lynn sent us a picture the other day, said, I want you to see this before and after picture of our church sign. This new member of our church took it upon themselves to go and clean it and wash it. When I think that person said, don't say a word about it. That's not why I did it. I did it because there was a need, right? And this is my church. See the genuineness of when we serve? Not for our own glory, but when there's a need to help others see in a far greater way than a sign on the road to see the sign of Christ's love living in us. That's what happens when we serve. Manya and I went out to eat Friday night with the boys, had a wonderful meal, and um, we had this great server. Y'all remember the days when they used to call those who, they used to call them something different, the people who brought your food, right? Remember what they were called? Waiters. A waitress. But now oftentimes they're called servers. Don't you like that word better? I mean, who wants to go to a restaurant and you, you go and you sit down at the table and you got a waiter and all they do is just sit there and wait on you to finish eating? I don't want that. I want to be served. And really good servers, as we had the other night, this server had a beautiful smile on his face. He was energetic. He was always trying to meet our needs. He was wanting us to enjoy the feast. And when he messed up one time, he claimed it, named it, and said, I messed up. And before the night was over, we had a wonderful meal, and he got a big old tip out of the deal those nights. Because he was serving, and I think he genuinely was wanting us to have a festival occasion. Isn't that what happens? As we talked of in our Bible study this week, Lynn had this text. The servant understands it's not about them. The servant seeks to serve the master. And bring glory to him. That's why we do what we do in our faith. That's why we become the hands and feet of Christ because God has first served us with the love from on high. So then we transition out. And we do the things that you are so amazing at doing here, RPC. Friends, if I started naming everybody that's involved in the ministry here and everything we do, the coach for kids we spoke of, Kyle and Norris and all of you Rotarians, Chris and Bryce, they almost get in trouble, start naming names, Bobby. All these Rotarians who give hundreds coats away. You're a part of that. We partner with them. Our choir, the hour 
hours they put in singing and preparing and the joy it is. If everybody knew how much fun we had, we'd have to buy, build three more rows back here. This Advent team that's going to meet next week and plan and do, I don't have to do anything around here. I've got all these worker bees. Lynn Hill runs his church from top to bottom, and she's got all these people that help her. Chris Marcellus was here this week. I'm sorry I'm calling names. He was working on that video. Because they didn't want to see me on the iPad again, did they, Chris? And he and Randall, they got it fixed, and Randall's up there running the camera and the computer today. Doggone Robert Goosby's here opening the church. Max closing the church down. Y'all don't believe how many people are involved in ministry. Yeah, you do. Because every one of you are involved in something, aren't you? You see, that's what it means to serve. We know the joy of living out our faith. I'm gone too long, I know, but I've got to say just a bit more here. I'd share with some of you, and this will be new. I want to repeat this. I'd share with some of you in my doctoral work in strategic leadership, faith-based strategic leadership, really Christ-modeled strategic leadership. I shared a 10-point step of leadership in my dissertation. And the last four points, I said, spell the word ship of leadership, right? And And I spoke of how, that you know, the smallest boat, or the biggest ship all have something in common that moves it forward. It's something really small, right, compared to the larger vessel. It's, it's a propeller. And oftentimes, you won't see that propeller. And it's so small compared to the larger structure, and it's under the water. But without that propeller, the vessel will not move forward to its preferred future, right? I use that imagery to say these last four principles of leadership in my mind are like that propeller on a ship. They're often overlooked. They can be taken for granted, but without them, there is no leadership. And those last four that spell the word ship of that acronym are this. They're servanthood, humility, integrity, and prayer. You see, that's the heart of what Jesus is teaching us today. If you want to model the faith, embrace your commitment to serve. Serve God and serve one another and do it humbly. Right, Lynn? That's what we spoke of in our Bible study this week. Humble yourselves, he says here. I've quoted Jeff Orge before, the president of of Gateway Seminary, Southern Baptist Seminary in San Francisco, who I heard speak this in person. And he said, you know, I think those words are written for a purpose, literally. When Jesus says, humble yourselves, he's saying, take ownership in being humble. Work to be more humble. I want to give you one more acronym. I know I know, we're pushed. One more acronym today. And you won't forget this one either. If you want to be more humble, try to take on the nature of a pig. Can you remember the word pig? The P in pig, uh, because a pig's pretty humble, aren't they? They know they're not the most beautiful thing in the world. They'll eat just anything you give them. They're not picky. They'll root around in the mud if that's what they got. They just take it as it comes. So for me, the model of growing in humility to doing what Jesus says here today, the P in the pig is to pray. strive to become more humble and friend we do that by asking God to help us so if you want to grow in your humility pray about it the eye of humility is remembering that I didn't do it I didn't get there by myself we grow in humility when we realize we need others most importantly we need God and finally the G of the pig model of humility is to be grateful. See, the more we count our blessings, the more we know that we are nothing without God's grace, the more humble we are going to be to give that same grace to the world around us. So go forth, dear church, as the light of Christ and big old sow pigs to love the world as humble servants.
All right. Friends, let's remember as Christian people what we believe. We do that as a part of our worship by reciting the Apostles' Creed. This creed was written in the early centuries of our faith. It uses some ancient words, words like the Holy Catholic Church, meaning the, the one universal church, the Holy Ghost, the repentance and forgiveness of sin. So as Christians, regardless of denomination or location, time, this has held true as what we believe as Christians. Would you stand with me and let us remember what it is that we hold true as people of Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let's continue responding in faith by now giving of ourselves in sharing together in God's tithes and our offerings.
God, what a joy it is to proclaim your glory. We also ask your blessings on these gifts that we bring here this day and that we may be a gift to this world in your name, through your love, and for your glory. We pray for the ministries of our church and every church that ministers in this community and throughout the world in your name. We ask, oh God, your guidance upon our nation. We are grateful to be part and uh, and, and members of this land of liberty and freedom, we should cherish that great gift and be a gift to the world around us as your leaders for love and hope wherever there's brokenness. And may you ask especially your prayer on those impacted so severely, the innocent lives impacted in the war going on in uh, the Gaza Strip and also the Uranium, uh, Ukraine and Russian conflict. We pray for healing and peace in our world. We lift up, God, those who lead our nation. We pray specifically for our president, for our Senate, the Congress, the Supreme Court, those who serve all of us as people through their military giving of their own sacrifice and service that we may have liberty and freedom. We pray, God, for every person who we've mentioned this day for special need. We pray for little Slate and for Eddie tomorrow. We pray for Bill Rayner, those that we've spoken by name. We ask for healing and wholeness and comfort and miracles of grace in their life and restoration. We pray for everyone on our prayer list and the names that are unspoken but are written on all of our hearts, those you've entrusted us to most of all to care for, our friends and family those from him who are strange, maybe even enemies. And now, God, through the great holiness of prayer, we pray for ourselves, knowing that everyone right now is lifting us up individually. We are praying for everyone individually. You know the needs, oh God, even more than the wants, the brokenness, the sinfulness, the sorrows, the questions, the decisions, the illnesses. Will you bring healing and wholeness, whatever those are, whether the needs be spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, relational, or eternal, we know you're the great physician. And now as your children, we lift our voices as one and say in prayer the words you taught us. Praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare for our hymn of response, remember, pray in the form you like. If you're a debtor or a trespasser or just a sinner, keep on trucking and pray the way the Lord's inspired you. Let's respond now with our hymn of response, number 276.
you receive with me God's blessing for us as his children. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen.